Well, welcome everyone. We're so grateful that you are coming to listen to our Zoom for this month of July. And, um, you know, it seems to be kind of a hot topic to talk about, you know, chronic illness and how to take care of that. And so um, that's what I chose to do today to, to, and with Steve to talk about, you know, all the new things that we've kind of done in um, quantum techniques and this no healing modality to help people really thrive in their life. And so, um, so I'm Jody Colbro and I do um, energy medicine, which is the modality of quantum techniques. And I'm a holistic health practitioner that helps people, you know, get their health back on track by clearing toxins and pathogens that are just in the way of us having that uh, great health that where we can really thrive. So I want to introduce uh, Dr. Stephen Daniel, the founder of Quantum Techniques. So, yes. Well, and you know, you had a couple of questions that people had brought in. Do you want to tell me what those are? And we'll just kind of blend everything together. And I'm sure there'll be more questions from people that are on the call. So ask, um, you know, when people aren't available to get here, I always ask, you know, hey, is there something that you want us to cover in case you can't come? And so um, we had um, one gentleman that asked, um, wanting to know what the root cause of Hashimoto's, um, thyroiditis, um, and I hope I'm saying that right, but it's probably thyroid, um, and then neuropathy. <clears throat> okay. And then this other one, which I thought was really a great question, and said, how do I bring more pleasure into chronic illness and joy instead of suffering? Okay. And, and that I think is kind of the crux of Yes, we can heal a lot of things, but you also want, you know, the joy in the journey. And, you know, so I think that was a really great question. So those are our two questions that people pose today. Well, good. <clears throat> um, you know, we, we've had really so many revelations. It, it's like they're not every month. They're not every week. They're starting to be every day. And... Uh, it's kind of interesting uh, in my quiet time this morning, I was just blown away by what God gave me yesterday and said a little bit to that, Jody, and we'll talk about that maybe at the end. And it's kind of interesting if you've listened to my voice recordings, I've had a problem on them for five years, <clears throat> had experts, nobody could figure it out. And I, I was just, you know, in that prayer time this morning and uh, I was saying, God, boy, I'm man, you blew me away. You're great at the big things. And he says, you know, I do small things too. You know, that whole thing you haven't received because you didn't ask. I, what are you thinking of? He goes, you know, that recording problem you've got, I know what that is. I said, what? He goes, here it is. Took me about two minutes to fix it. Don't have the recording problem anymore. So it's like, he answers the big questions and the little questions, but you got to know how to ask and then how to listen what you ask. God's always given it answers, but because we think we know the answer, we don't listen to anything that doesn't fit our model, and God doesn't fit our model. So <clears throat> the issue, and one of the questions was thyroid issues and neuropathy. The issues for all, the root cause of all chronic issue and autoimmune disease is the same. <clears throat> the body's inability to detox, period. Doesn't matter what the field is, we're gonna talk about that today. But one of the problems is we've not been able to go at it very aggressively because we didn't know <clears throat> how to fix the detox pathways, which we do now. And so, which blows me away, but I can do lead, mercury, and aluminum in one treatment no detox and it'll be done in 24 hours. That's unheard of. You know, if you think about the metaphor of uh, mercury detox, I don't care if it's homeopathy or supplements, but it's very painful, very slow. And my metaphor is you've got, you know, a rocky creek bed and that's your detox pathway. And they say, well, if we just release it from all the tissues, like we'll release the water from the dam, we'll just flood it out and it'll clean it right up. Yeah, but there's a lot of damage and suffering with that. What if we just create a new pathway where it can disappear instantly? What? That's possible? Yes. So we're going to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, I'm going to say Satan has given us a red herring to chase, decoys. 
and including me, quantum techniques, we've chased them. We've chased them through all medical systems. We're looking for frequencies, whether it's emotional, like, you know, anger, rage, hatred, whether it's pathogens, virus, parasites, whether it's heavy metals, pesticides, we've been chasing the wrong target. Because if the detox pathway is cleared, it doesn't matter what you've got or how many. Oh, you mean that works that way? Yeah. <clears throat> if we go back to the Garden of Eden, I think if Adam and Eve got a bee sting, it was gone instantly. Oh, what's that little, oh, that's a little stinger. Oh, they never even noticed it. It was made to detox instantly. We are made to detox instantly. And so why we don't detox is resistance and deception. That's going back to the fall of man. <clears throat> we have an idea about what healing is supposed to look like. Doesn't look like what Christ did. We were told we can do greater things than him in his name. So either he lied or we have missed the boat. I not only missed the boat, I missed the fact that there's an ocean. Okay. And once you understand and start applying these truths, it's a very, very different game than anything I could conceive of. And healing happens faster than you can conceive of. So <clears throat> I'm going to weave this. Um, I think the original sin, what there were, there were two creators in the garden. One was God and one was Satan. And how did Satan deceive Adam and Eve? He comes and he goes, hey, what you guys doing? Oh, we're just hanging out. Where's the big dude? Oh, he's not here. He must be off doing another galaxy. Oh, there's deception. What if he doesn't show up tomorrow? Adam says, what's tomorrow? He goes, well, you know, you don't know right now, but if God doesn't show up tomorrow, you're screwed. I mean, it's like if he doesn't show up and tell you what's going on, you don't know who you are or what you're doing. You mean we really need that guy? Yeah, but you know what? If you eat of that apple, you're going to know everything he knows and you can be ready for tomorrow. Oh, so Satan created deception, resistance to God's flow, and time. When you're living out of time, you're living in your thoughts about the past or future. You're not in the flow of healing, gratitude, love, God's spirit. That's the way it works. So give me the apple. We've been saying, give me the apple. I know the answers. I'm going to do it my way since then. And it hasn't worked very well. So that's resistance to the flow of God in the moment. That's what resistance really is. That's the original sin, deception, resistance. And not... Uh, you know, you did a pretty good job, but I'm going to do better. So I'm taking over from here. Okay. Now let's talk about how that manifests. And remember, we were, quote, given a sin nature. My theology, that was Christ dealt with that on the cross. Okay. I mean, he redeemed us. Well, then we don't have to have a sin nature if we know how this thing works. So I, I know this is sounding really bizarre. Um, but for those of you who aren't Christians, I use this because that's my background. Um, it's not up and running, but I was given to get a new domain name this weekend, and it's called the Blessed Pass, P A T H S dot com. And we're going to be working that through and have a parallel track to QT. And why did I say pass? Because there's a lot of people that weren't raised in Christianity. They have access to God like anybody else. There's one God. We use different names. So religion is kind of like the blind men, you know, checking out the elephant. And each one of them could just see a little bit. Oh, it must be a snake. He got the trunk. You know, must be a, a skeleton. He just got the tusk. No. And, and all religions are, they don't even come close to giving you an experience and, and an understanding of who God really is and how much he loves you, who you are in him and his true love and power. That's the deception that started in the garden. So let's go back. Let's talk about miasms. Miasms are energy frequencies that occur at the moment of, of 
you know, conception and understand miasms are not my just my biological line. Okay. It taps into the collective and conscious all the way back to the garden. Boy, I, I never really wrapped my head around that before. But let me give an example. And I'll be teaching in metaphors. That, that's just the way I do it. I can accurately predict the diseases you're going to get and your longevity based on the pathogens that you have at conception. Wow. Now, I think you can change that course if you know how and you act You act early. You don't wait until the disease is fully manifest. And I've got some notes over here somewhere. I could pull them out and talk about them, but... <clears throat> Within the categories like mold, virus, I don't usually find miasms with bacteria, parasites, protozoa, mycoplasma. It doesn't matter how many frequencies the body identifies as live, except for mold. Okay. If you're born with one mold, or if you conceive there's one mold frequency, um, <clears throat> you're going to have, you won't ever get rid of candida and you might get cancer. Okay, if you get one mold frequency, you get cancer with any decent treatment, you'll recover. If the body registers two, you'll, re you'll definitely get cancer, and you'll register, and 80% of the time you'll recover. If there's three, you only have a 40% recovery rate. If there's four, you're dead. And I go back, and I've tested hundreds of people I've worked with. That's true. So if we look at that, <clears throat> and... I don't have a case in front of me, but um, I could. But if I check, let's just say the person has mold, okay, mycoplasma, and protozoa. It's pretty common. And let's say the mycoplasma and protozoa came through dad. It's important to know why. <clears throat> because the sins of the fathers are visited upon the seventh generation. And if you have spiritual oppression, you can find it on our emotional chart, and it came right there. So we'll talk about that as well. But think about an old plow the farmer's pulling. Okay. Now, for every category, like this has mold, and I only get one mold in the imaginary case, every category, I just set the plow an inch deeper. <clears throat> so if I've got three and only one mold, I got a three inch deep plow. Okay. The issue is that's only part of the issue. Let's say that I also have mercury, lead, and aluminum, which we all do. Well, I just added a hundred pounds for each one of those on top of the plow. So now I'm digging not three inches, but three feet. Now, when you're born with something, the body doesn't recognize the danger. <clears throat> it's like I have three three uh, categories here. So imagine, you know, I'm born in this little village, and these these guys they just dress differently. You know, all black, mask, headscarf. You know, carrying an AK-47, but they've always been here. They must be okay. And they hang out with the brown, the guys dressed in brown with the AK-47 and the guys in blue. Well, there's your three pathogen fields. Okay. The body never knows they're terrorists, so they don't say, well, stay out of my bedroom, stay out of my kitchen, stay out of the water treatment plant. There's no defense because they were never recognized as dangerous. That's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is what do those terrorists shield what sticks to them it's not a toxin field so i'm just going to use myself in this case you know if i just check what did i now this is i've done this a long time ago i didn't have mold but so if you check it's not going to be ingestants inhalants contactants injectant it's going to be pathogens and they're all going to be dead so in this field for me oh yeah big numbers five thousand viruses Okay, no bacteria. Oh, 32 moles. Okay, um, 9,700 9, protozoa and 1,600 mycoplasma. These are all dead, but they're still messing up the system. 
<clears throat> so then I show where is that in the body, organ glands and tissues, just like we clear everything else. And it's done. Now, when you do this, you are creating a new neural pathway. And so how do we do that? We'll talk about this more, but there are six places you touch on your head. Oh, kind of looks like you're laying out of hands. Oh no, you're kidding me? Yeah, well, oh, that's that's what God kind of did. I think Christ was a showman. He could have just said, be gone, but you know, he had to give him some kind of ritual to believe in, you know, because they're humans, right? So if you stroke above your head four times, corpus callosum, meninges, scar tissue, cerebral spinal fluid, the very back top of the head, if you have our charts, thalamus, okay, sides of the neck, still like ganglia, a tap of the ears. That is saying I'm erasing all the deep plow marks so this can get its own virgin territory and I can detox anything without a healing crisis. Whoa, yeah, I do all this in my first session now. So that's how you create the pathway and then you show where it is in the body. Okay, so let's go to heavy metals. It's the same thing. It's not the metals themselves. Now, they're bad enough, but what do they attach to? <clears throat> what are they hiding, shielding? This is where we get the idea of biofilms, okay? You're going to find very high numbers, maybe 25,000. They're all dead. Viruses, you know, sometimes bacteria, not so much. Large numbers of dead mold, again, Sometimes parasites, some not protozoa mycoplasma every time. And you clear them the same way. This is a different field. You reset those six points. Okay. So then we look at our other friend, <clears throat> vaccines. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm 70 years old, and I don't believe in vaccines. So I've only had seven vaccines in my life, all when I was a little kid. But those seven vaccines had 192 man-made compounds in them. That's where the damage is. And then we say, did this pick up some trash? Are these shielding things? Oh yeah. Again, it's not gonna be toxins. It's gonna be virus, mold, you know, parasites, protozoa, mycoplasma. You show the body where it is, it's a different ball game. <clears throat> because anything you find now will completely wash out. So, this helps the body recognize these were terrorists and everything they've been shielding. Okay. It, in a sense, uses God's teaching that healing should be instant. It, it shouldn't take time. Now, since then, we've even learned more, but <clears throat> that's by doing that. And then I do all that first. And then I'll go back and say, okay, what are all the spokes, organ glands, and tissues? Actually, I, I get that first because I, I like to see where I started. Then I'll run my scan. You know, what are the organ glands and tissues involved? We call those spokes. If we'd already cleared, um, we make sure we have that. Okay, do I have? And, and I'll take it, I'll take it further. Another step. How many spokes can I see? Well, let's say I see 192 spokes. Okay. But we were told, you know, we could see through God's eyes and hear through God's ears and feel with God's heart. So I said, God, how many spokes do you see? See, I was using known and unknown spokes that I could see. When I ask God, I get a lot higher number and none of them are unknown for some reason because he built the system, right? So I'll go in there and it's like, oh, I saw 192. It says, well, there's actually, you know, 37,412. And I'll say, well, how many are physically? Well, you, you had that right, 192 physical. Do I need to know what they are? No. What? I got it covered. You know, and another metaphor, I live on a steep little hill. And I've got two large plastic trash cans that you roll down, one recycling I don't take time to pick through the trash and say, oh, I've got a virus in there, a bacteria, a couple of vaccines, some heavy metal, and a couple of traumas. As long as I have a clear shot to the, you no, know, where the trash bin comes, I just take it out. Now, there's two ways. If my, if my driveway's blocked by snow or somebody dropped a mound of dirt, 
I have two choices. I can create a pathway around that. I can remove that and get the trash down, or I have to dig through the trash and say, well, I'm going to have to carry one brick at a time. Yeah, I actually threw some old bricks away and a bunch, a ream of paper and a half. Now I got to carry it laboriously over the pile because I don't know I'm supposed to make a new pathway. Okay. That's what we, that's part of what we've been doing. We've been picking through the trash when you don't need to pick through the trash, just get it down the, you know, get down with guy picks it up. So it's, it's a very different understanding about disease. And, uh, and I also think if you look at Christ's teachings, healing was instantaneous. You know, and this is something for another day, but I'm going to give you a teaser. Um, you know, I was telling people, because I, I didn't ask, uh, I'll say the big dude <laughs> properly. Um, I was saying, well, I'm getting it. I tested it. It's going to take about four days to fully down, download into the body. And I, I was thinking, I said, well, yeah, if Christ would have done that, the blind guy would have said, leave the mud on your eyes for four days. I'm going to, un unlike our, our press secretary, I actually do cycle back. I'll come back and check in four days, and we'll do it again another week, and a week after that. And The lame guy said, well, listen, I, I wanted to tell you to pick up your stuff and walk, but you know, you're just not ready yet. You know, Healing takes time. I mean, I'm God, but I got limits, so same plan. It's like, that's not really how he handled it. You know, He said, get up. <laughs> you're, you're done. That means that he had to instantly heal the DNA damage for blindness. And I think we figured out, I think that's been revealed. Um, I'm, that's something new I'm playing with. But for those, for the recording, for those uh, that weren't here, um, I pretty much destroyed my right elbow 37 years ago, weight training, and I've had pretty limited use. Uh, and about three years ago here shoveling snow, I kind of did the rest of it in where I I couldn't use my right hand and take a glass of water and, unless I had my left hand underneath it. So it's pretty bad. You know, and the best elbow guy in the state looked at it with MRIs and CAT scans and he said, um, that's not coming back. That you you don't have connective tissue going from the muscle to the bones. There's nothing we can do about that. Um we get artificial elbow should be a good candidate. Okay. So when I got this message about instant healing yesterday, I thought, well, let me do what I was told to do. And that was between 1230 and one at three o'clock. I went out to get my you know gallon of sun tea, you know, and that you know, weighs 10 pounds. And I always lift it with my left hand because I, I can't with my right. And I walk, I realized when I walked into the house, I had it in my right hand. And it's like, oh, hmm, maybe that scan did something. Maybe, maybe it is instant. So since I can't leave things alone, you know, I went into my office where I've got some weights and I I loved weight training and I haven't been able to do it for many, many, many years. So um usually I can do two or three and then I start getting pain. And so I I leave it alone. And it's usually inflamed for two weeks. So I thought, well, let's just see. So I did something I haven't been able to do for 25 years. I did 30 curls and 30 presses with that arm. And I haven't been able to do that for 25 years. I had no pain and suffering. I thought, well, that's hard to believe. But let's see in the morning, because I didn't feel it this time, but I'm at inflammation. No pain this morning, no inflammation. And that's when I started and God said, man, you're great at the big stuff. And he said, well, let me show you how to fix your recording system. <laughs> so it's it's been a very interesting journey. Um, but, you know, to realize how much we've been chasing the wrong target and how much that's blocked our ability to help people is it's very humbling. But also it's been humbling to be given a path that you can show people and teach people because this is this is stuff people can learn on their own. So, and that's that's part of that new website that we're <clears throat> really thinking about meditating and praying how to how to do that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure the wisdom will come when it's supposed to. So, the fact that you can go after anything, which I've never been able to do in my entire life as a healer. 
and know no matter what I find, no matter how dig I, deep I dig, if I just check and make sure there's a new detox neural pathway, you're not going to have healing crisis. Now, somebody did say, well, man, I sure pooped a lot. I said, that's not actually a healing crisis. That's, that's literally getting the lead out. You know, and if we had done a mercury treatment and lead mercury, I said, you know, it, it's got to go somewhere. So it wouldn't be surprised if you have more bowel movements for a day or two. Um, if you notice your weight dropping because you're not full of you know what anymore. And it's kind of interesting. I noticed yesterday, I, I drink well over a gallon a day. And I, I realized that I only drink half of that. Well, I guess I don't, I've flushed out so much, I don't need as much. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. That's a, that's a lot to hit people with to start out, but you know, I'm more than willing to take questions. Yeah, I appreciate Steve, you talking about the different illustrations about what we're doing. Cause sometimes when I'm working with clients is trying to explain a little bit of, so I have a vision of what I'm doing. And, um, and I, I think I really enjoy the, the idea of that trash can and um, that, you know, instead of going through it and trying to unload what's in that trash can and then that causing your symptoms is saying, right. hey, we just need to get it through the debris field that's down to, to the bottom of the um, right way so that God can take it out, you know? And so, you know, we're removing those things. And I think almost sometimes the, the looking through God's eyes is like, you know, why instead of us having a house and a driveway and a trash can, why don't we just get it back to the way I created it in the God of Eden, which is right. the trees and the beauty and that kind of stuff right. <laughs> to start with. <laughs> Well, and you know, I it's it's kind of a joke, but I I thought about getting a T-shirt. Hey, baby, show you my symptom. I'll show you a pathway. You know, it's because all symptoms, physical or emotional, are resistance. Whatever's there, pain, discomfort, weakness, a virus, depression, we're made to experience them, and they flush through instantly. It's our resistance against those because of oh, I can't feel that, or I don't believe that. That's what makes them stick. So it's I, a metaphor. Another metaphor I used at first <clears throat> is it's like you want to go play on the, the uh, slide in the, play, in the playground, but somebody's glued sandpaper to it. You can still get down that slide, but you're going to lose something you know, on your rear end, and it's going to be slow and painful. But what if you just take that off, Teflon coat the, the slide, and put some silicone spray, and then you realize... Yeah, they did that to the monkey bars and the merry-go-round and the swings. Well, let's, let's just clean it all up, you know? And that kind of gets back to when you're not exhausted and in pain, joy comes naturally. Joy and happiness comes naturally. Um, when you're always in pain and always struggling and always exhausted, boy, you try to fake it till you make it in terms of being happy. But we weren't created to be that way. I, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> Is there any way to help us not want to stay in that box that we're comfortable with? Um, because we understand the lumps and the bumps and what we have to go through and how it feels. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to, like, I see the, the box, but to like say, okay, I want to, to truly be out of the box and, and be able to do that. Yes. You know, it's kind of interesting. The other thing I found is you can aim this and fits into what you're saying with somebody that's got a block to muscle testing you aim that it's always involved with their third eye and it is a fear field every time a fear of seeing something i don't want to see in myself or others a fear that god won't give me this gift and you clear that and all of a sudden it's like i teach people how to see feels yeah muscle test yeah all their blocks are gone. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You just got to know where to look and how to clear it. Mm -hmm. But I would say there will be some people. I've had one person that I did something on, you know, and and they felt the sensation. They're, they have the greatest terror of any body sensation that they don't already know of any person I've ever met. And they said, don't ever do anything new to me again, ever. I said, okay. If you want me to just clear viruses and bites the rest of your life, that's okay. You know, I, I accept you where you are, but just know that there's so much greater if you're willing to, you know, do other things. But you got to meet people where they are. You know, and I think that's why with this other website, we'll always have quantum techniques 
and we'll enhance that with all this. But then we might have a parallel path, but very few people are going to start there because it's it's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe. Hmm. You know, I, I, I will tell kind of a story on myself. Seeing God as he is is very different than what we were taught. And I have two stories, very true. Uh, I don't have a lot of childhood memories, but but one, my parents were kind of sarcastic. And uh, first of all, remember the story of the emperor had no clothes and it was a little kid who said, hey, he's not wearing anything. So my parents told me when God made you, he threw the mold away. And I looked back up and I said, yeah, but some of it grew back. You know, I was about five years old. When I'm about seven, I can't remember the specific infraction, probably something I did to my brothers, or I, I wrote a crayon on the wall, and we just come home from church, and I'm fixing to get a whipping, and those were not gentle whippings. And I said, wait a second, um, did Jesus die for my sins? Yeah, all my sins? Yeah, they're all forgiven. I said, did he forgive that one? You know, pushing my brother? Yeah. Why am I getting a whooping? Okay. Because God forgives you, but we don't. Okay. And therein lies the rub. God's already forgiven us and other people. We don't forgive ourselves and others. So, oh, that's resistance. It's stuck. They didn't think that was funny either. So, but kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting journey we're on. Um, so there might be some questions if people have. Right. That's, that's what I was going to say. I, I open it up for questions. And you can unmute your, yourself uh, if you have a question. Yeah. Hi, hi Jody. Hi, Steve. Hi. Good to see you. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I have a question, and you know, I mean, I've been working with you for a long time. And uh, do you think that the mistrust or not believing that it works for one can also be a part of the block to detoxing and letting this actually really work? Yes. I'll tell you what, going back for years, nobody comes to quantum techniques because, oh, I think that's going to work for me. They've tried everything else. They've lost all their money. And they said, what do I got to lose? The guy gives the money back guarantee. So absolutely. If we think, and, and I'm not talking just your belief. I'm saying there is a collective unconscious belief about what's required for healing and happiness. And it's basically by and large BS. So yes, you know, and I, you know, some of the prayers from the early people, they were saying, oh, God help me with my unbelief. So would and you? Add, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go. No. Yeah. So, so with this new work that you're doing now, the new scan, um, does that, when you do a scan on me, as for example, and you find all these new pathways, would you need to address those specifically to create that, or is that automatically kind of flushing out whatever is in the way? I think God's got a pretty good trigger on our unbeliefs. So it's like I've done a whole bunch of treatments. With, I've got clients that they know, Steve, hit me with anything new you got since I've, they're not going to detox. I've had several of them since yesterday because this latest download was yesterday. And they send me an email. I say, hey, I got something. New. I'm going to hit you with it. You know, They're going to try to explain it it's much quicker. I'm, I am in the process of dictating and writing stuff up now that I'm learning how to do some of that. And, uh, and the next day they say, I don't know what you did, but I feel very different. And it's like, yeah, well, when I figure it out, I'll, I'll explain what how that happened to the best of my ability. So they don't even know what I'm doing, much less know enough to have disbelief. Yeah. Okay, I so didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, I'm I'm slowly letting you knock off my socks. So yeah. There you appreciate go. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I, I told Sonia that this will knock your socks off. And I've got to the where I, I can't eat. You know, I, I'm working barefoot, but I was looking for my socks the other day. They weren't even in the house. They're running down the street. They know they're going to get blown off anyway. So they're not even hanging around. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else have a question? I'm writing down the things that I can think I have blocks to, because I tend to have blocks to testing foods that I'm going to eat. And the, 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 <laughs> The thing is, it's like, well, if I find that it's bad or has mold, I like that to throw it away. And so I'm spending money and throwing it away. And so, um, but anyway, you just realize that there's those, sometimes those just little beliefs that get, get you hung up. 
And so just kind of being aware of what they are. Well, you know, I, I don't have food cravings. You know, I've been eating a certain way for so many years. And if I have good, good energy and, I mean, I, I do like super hot, spicy food, but I make that myself with jalapeno peppers and everything. I'm not helping or serrano peppers. But what's happened recently is I don't have any more food sensitivities. I mean, I, I can eat dairy. I can eat wheat. I'm not used to it, so I haven't started. But I did tell Jamie that um, we need to get her mom's sour cream enchilada that was smoking hot and, and her uh, lasagna recipes. And, and we are going to have a little cooking party together. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to that. That's part of the fun and enjoyment of getting your life back. Sounds like I need that recipe too. We keep playing with the green chili uh, enchiladas. Okay. <laughs> Got to have some of that in Kansas. <laughs> we'll have a party. Yeah. When you're here in Arizona, we'll have a cooking party. Yeah. Stuff, all, all the stuff we couldn't eat before, but now we can enjoy. <laughs> Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Kind of hit you with a lot of different new ideas. Well, if no one else has a question, I have another question. <laughs> um, and you kind of mentioned it already and answered it a little bit indirectly through uh, your question. So with this new way of doing it or additional, like, um, do you see food sensitivities or any other sensitivities either leave or get better like you know me like i'm super sensitive to injections and inhalants and all of that stuff can that also just get better through right. this new pathway work if you do the pathways on it it clears now i have had many clients <clears throat> that live in places like missouri and louisiana and texas and they were getting their adrenals knocked out their sleep knocked out pain inflammation heart tachycardia because they're always getting bites and now when I work with them, I'll check, well, you've had 17 bites since the last time, but they all cleared instantly. So yes, where bites no longer become a problem. That's a big issue. Yeah, I mean, what's for you, for you right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you can clear that, I'm pretty sure you can clear. And same thing with pollens. There's a pathway for that. And it's not like I need a separate one for each bite. I did find it important because bites have pathogens. So a lot of times I'll create a new pathway. Probably I can do it together. But like for bites, viruses, bacteria, vaccines, now we can gump them together and it's quicker. But what's happened is, you know, if you if you do the miasm on mold with people that I've worked with for years that always have candida, two weeks later when I check them, candida's gone. It's amazing. Uh, yeah and and last question and i don't know if that's too soon or there's enough experience or research or whatever it's like for someone that goes to menopause and does uh, take bioidentical hormones like me um that i think i will have to take until the rest of my life right. is that something that can also help ho balance hormones or well i was taking thyroid meds. I haven't taken any for years. And that was old stuff. Absolutely. I, I don't think, you know, it's kind of like in the Garden of Eden, I'm pretty sure there wasn't a pharmacy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Eve wasn't on bioidentical hormones. There wasn't antibiotics and cold capsules because as soon as it showed up, it was gone. You know, I, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know how far we can take that, but yeah. I know that it can't harm you to do a fast and the scans are very fast. It doesn't take long. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll keep doing a few. Like, I mean, you did a few, and I'll, I'll just keep keep going. Shipping. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank well, you, Steve. And, and let me say, let me. This is kind of interesting, and I'm I'm not saying this to brag on myself, but what you're really asking is, is there kind of an age reduction? And I'm seventy. I can do things now I could never do at thirty. I'm. Without effort, I'm doing like 360 to 400 deep yoga squats, breathing without stopping in the morning. And then I, I try not to do that every day. So I then just do 100 on my light days. And then I walk seven and a half miles. It's like, and then I work all day. It's like, I don't have, I have energy and mental clarity that I haven't had if ever in my life for at least 45 years. And that's all been since January this year. Um. In January, I weighed 228. This morning, I weighed 184. You know, it's just like, well, I fixed my sugar metabolism. 
And my carb and that was part of my carbohydrate intolerance. I couldn't eat carbs without ballooning up, so I just didn't eat them. <clears throat> I can have carbs, I don't balloon up anymore. Another issue for women, well, for everybody, but if you don't absorb fats well, then you can't protect your brain from like things like MS and dementia. Well, you and that's why statin drugs are so damaging, but you also can't have proper hormone balance if you do not have fat absorption properly. That's because our body protects our neural tissue and makes our hormones out of the fat in our diet. So yeah, there's things that we can address quickly. Super, thank you. Sure. Yeah, one, Good, question. Really, one of the things that really helped me, Steve, and this is not something we kind of talked about, but the whole idea of looking at the different neurotransmitters and how they um, really help or get them to balance with like say uh, GABA and, um, sorry, <laughs> uh, and glut glutamate, because that right. helped to be really, really helpful. Yeah. Well, I, I do, um, <clears throat> I'll tell uh, some stories on myself. I, you know, I, I do everything new on myself and I don't put a filter on it because I'm, I'm pretty robust and that allows me to gauge what I can do with people. And we had done so many of these things before, like we'd clear something, but then we'd go back and check their cannabinoids or all their, you know, apoptosis, autophagy, or all those clear. Well, you can, on cancer, you can make a pathway for those. So I hadn't done any of that for a while with the new stuff. And then I thought, this was like last Friday, late in the day. And I thought, oh, why don't I just see what happens? So I cleared my cannabinoids. Um, now, I do use for pain like one drop of a THC tincture and uh, during the day and maybe three drops in the evening. I, I don't use more than that. That's not much if you, you know. I woke up, I slept great that night and I woke up the next day and I was stoned. It's like, whoa, what did I take? I didn't take anything. My body just opened up all the endocannabinoids. And I still worked, I still functioned, but I definitely could tell I was in an altered state. That left about three o'clock. <clears throat> and so then got my energy back and I'm working on projects and I'm working on these lists eventually that people could just go through and use the new method and clear things real quickly. And, you know, me not being the smartest, not being the sharpest spoon in the drawer, I decided, well, I'll just write them down and clear them. Got about um, halfway through the list and then I stopped, which was a good thing. I got up the next day and I was one tired puppy. I was very relaxed. I had no pain, you know, that whole endocannabinoid scan got rid of some chronic pain I'd been having in my back for about a week trying to figure it out. It's gone. But the next morning, um, very, very aware that I was tired on Sunday. I just rest. I mean, I still did all my stuff and, but my energy was down because it, it was taking all those scans. I had no negative symptoms. I was just, wasn't quite as high energy. And that, you know, that was done by the time I got up Monday morning, then I started doing new stuff again. So, but um, it, it's very interesting how it works out. The, the same thing when I did this new scan on myself where I could use my arm again. Mm -hmm. About an hour later, I got tired. I wasn't exhausted pain, but I knew I, I was going to go out and take my dog for another three and a half mile walk. And I thought I'm supposed to rest. So it, it does, the body does use the energy for sure. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to, back up with uh, Sonia and she talked about, you know, menopause and I'm going through that myself. And so um, what I found is a lot of times it will hit those neurotransmitters when the change yes. of, um, you know, life happens. And so I've really struggled with my GABA for the last couple of years. And what you found is to make sure that GABA and glutamate are the same ratio. And right. doing that was absolutely profound because I no mm -hmm. longer had the dips of you know, depression or um, just moodiness or whatever. So that was def a really neat thing. Um, so I just wanted to kind of follow that up with Sonia. We do have a question that's come in um, from Jacqueline and it says, so are you saying that we no longer do neuroplasticity scan, but instead you are just creating a neuro uh, or a new neural pathway? Correct. It's a whole new revolutionary way of fixing neuroplasticity. And <clears throat> um, 
I'm going to come back to neuroplasticity, jumping into the GABA glutamate balance. Key issue in tinnitus, again, you can fix that. And if that balance is off and tinnitus can lead to deafness, if you don't resolve that, and then it also adds to your neurodegenerative disease like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. So that's pretty important. Yeah, coming back to neuroplasticity, <clears throat> we have to, if you think about like Annie Hopper and Gupta, uh, Gupta they have uh, you know, um, neural retraining, the brain retraining. I'm, I'm blanking on exact words they use. DNR is one of the acronyms. And it's kind of like, you know, my metaphor is, you know, I used to live up in Flagstaff and I had a big four-wheel drive truck and I'd go back, you know, to cut wood back in the forest. And you're not supposed to go out back there when it's real muddy because you destroy the roads. And you'll you'll be, you try to be driving and somebody went down there when they were supposed to and there's big ruts in that road. You cannot go anywhere once you're, tires in that rut about where that's going to go. Well, that's cognitive rigidity. When you have the same response of pain or fear or trauma or environmental reactions, it's going down the same old rut, can't get out. So my metaphor is they say, listen, let's just, you know, let's get your forward drive truck with a winch, a high low jack, and a couple of chainsaws. Let's just cut another road right next to it. And you can do that. And those therapies do work. I recommend them. But it's a lot faster if God gives you a grader and you could just grade over the old road where it's no longer a problem. You don't have to spend as much time and energy cutting new, new trails. So this, in a sense, just says, that's great technique. Do this first and then see if you need it. If you do, it's going to be a thousand times quicker and easier. Yeah. No, it was a really good que question. So thank you, Jacqueline. Was... Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Yes, there's a lot of new stuff and we're, you know, I think I spent the weekend kind of going over several of the scans that um, you, you've done on me, Steve, and kind of as groups and learning and, you know, to try to figure out the flow <laughs> and, uh, but it's exciting to see, you know, some, and the different things and how it, uh, functions, you know, and it's like, uh, I've noticed right away, you know, my dearest puppy loves to uh, run around the golf course and eat elk poop. <laughs> right. And then we have to deal with the consequences uh, afterwards. Um, and so, you know, trying to get her to not, let's say, like elk poop that much, but also I can definitely tell that the consequences are not as bad as they were. Um, yeah. And so that, and it's, so it's neat to see, you know, on someone that doesn't have all the ego involved that it you know it they work too and, and you know with pets and everything so that does help though. there's another question that came in from victor and it says um is it necessary to do the six points and then test for spoke pathways or is it only necessary to do the one thing well it depends on which model you're using i mean <clears throat> i think when you realize you're creating a neural pathway, you know, you do the six points or you say, you already know what it is. You've done it once. You can say, release this. Boom, release this. Or say, bless this. Okay, done. I mean, it, it, once you know it, once you know what you're doing, you don't have to go through steps. But it was interesting the way I was, I was led to this is, you know, I'm, I'm saying, what am I doing here with this thing over my head? Who... Where have I read about that before? Oh, you mean the laying on of hands? Wow. Wow. Okay. So, you know, it is interesting again, you know, uh, God gives you the desires of your heart if it's if it's your heart for him. And I was fascinated by, uh, oh, Stanley Livingston, you know, the, where the explorer found him in deepest, darkest Africa and he's healing the natives. That made me want to be a doctor. And then my mom's middle illness, I knew medicine wasn't the answer. So I went to psychology and now I'm doing this stuff <laughs> someplace else. But you look at that. And and then the other thing I, I remember, uh, very fascinated, and a lot of, again, with my mom's middle illness and how that affected the family. As a teenager, really struggling, is there, uh, I wished I had the gift of laying on of hands. I I, I think we're there. I think we know how to do that now, and you can do it remotely. That's that's the 
that's what we're looking how to present that in that blessedpast.com. You know, I'm pretty excited about that, but I am fairly busy. So God's got to give me the juice and the people on my team. He'll, he'll bring the people in to help me get all that together. We had, I think we had another question, didn't we? Yeah. So it says, Jacqueline's asking, what are the six points? Okay. And, um, we have kind of like a, a sheet of that, but we could, Steve, you want to give it again? And I can also right. send it to people if they put their email in. Yeah. If you just run your hands over your head for four things, corpus callosum, okay, meninges, cerebral spinal fluid, and whether it's energetic or physical, these plows make scars. So scar tissue, that's the four things. The thalamus, I don't know if you can see, it's two thirds up the way the back of your head. So it's about right here. About two thirds up, you'll feel a little indent. It's very forgiving. The sides of the neck, it's the ganglia, stellate ganglia. That is part of the limbic system. That's why they're using it for PTSD, depression, chronic pain, chronic. But if you put the word in chronic in front of it, they're giving injections here. I had that done. First one was quite helpful. The second one, my body said, we ain't doing that again. But you can do that energetically. And then the, the old Neuralink way of setting things was tapping above the ears. So it's really one, two, three, four, side of the neck, tap above the ears. But you can just say, release it. Works just as good. And see, part of what this is, is we're putting this in the collective unconscious. Somebody's got to lay down the information. And then we'll find shortcuts. And Jody knows what I'm doing now versus what I was doing a year ago is dramatically different. It's quicker, it's faster, it's simpler. It's like Jody is known as our librarian. She's got this notebook. It's probably 500 pounds with every scan we've ever done. And we are not going to be doing a training once a year anymore. I think we're going to be doing shorter trainings quarterly because things are advancing so quickly. I, I just did a training the weekend before, what was it Labor Day? Memorial Day, whichever day it was, the end of uh, May. And a week later, I had so much information, it was obsolete. <laughs> so, I, and I wouldn't say it's obsolete. It's uh, driving a car when we now have a magic car, but let's put it that way. So we're going to do another training, you know, in uh, September when people are back from their vacations and travels over the summer. To get to, now, I do train every other week on the phone. And I, I teach everything as soon as, it, as soon as I get it in some kind of form I can teach it. But that's part of being a part of a group. But then we try to have trainings where we're all on a Zoom call and we spend three or four days in practice and make sure everybody nails it before they go. Um, I put in my um, email so that if um, someone wants to get the list, uh, if they send me an email and ask me for the list, I can send that um, to you. So that way you have... For me, even the wonderful spelling I do, it's nice to have the actual spelling. <laughs> that was, I well, and, and when I get some of these things organized, I've just learned how to, getting back to technology and how to, I've got a dictation service and how to do that. Then we'll have an easy way. Right now, I've been trying to do it. And then Jamie's got to type it up. And, you know, she does have you know, four kids, three goats, four cats, two dogs and a husband. So she sometimes is a little late in getting things done right away. And by the time she gets it done, I've already got a new idea. So I'll be able to uh, uh, process a new information much quicker very soon. But yeah, thanks. I'm glad glad to share. And, you know, this is very fun, very exciting for me. And I, somebody said, do you think you're going to retire? I said, I'll do this until I die. And if I can, I'm going to do it from the other side too. I'm addicted to doing this. It's too much fun. So Steve, did we answer the questions on kind of what's the root cause of the different um, yep. illnesses? Okay. Mm -hmm. and just kind detox. Of it's toxins. It, it's pathogens, toxins, frequencies. It's a detox field. Everything is a detox field. And that's where it gets hung up is that detox. Right. So it kind of just keeps where, backing up and, and looks like you still have the issue when right. actually it's just not leaving the body. But let me say one other thing. I know we're almost out of time, but my thing for years was right-sided migraines you know severe head injury i've broken my shoulder fractured my collarbone separated my shoulder high cap kiting so pain would start right-sided migraine my metaphor is that somebody standing right in front of me screaming at the top of my, their lungs well i had another thing when they're doing that i don't notice it it would just be fatigue another thing about one out of a thousand headaches would be left-sided so when somebody's screaming in my face i don't hear my 
dryer chime that, you know, that, that the sheets are done. And I sure don't hear my little oven bing, the roast is done. Well, guess what? When this was the, gone and my, my nemesis was mycoplasma. It's like, wow, that's not happening. And then, boy, but I feel like I got run over by a truck. I'm so tired. Oh, what was that? Well, that only started 10 years ago. The migraines have started when I was 13, or the headaches, the, the pain. Oh, that's the little dryer chime. Okay, it was mycoplasma. Create a new pathway. Gone. Next thing. Oh, left side of my neck tightening up. Oh, I'm, I'm on to the symptoms now. It's unwrapping. And I want to go back. Learning happens in layers. Healing is instantaneous, but it's dependent upon the level of truth you understand and can apply. The more you understand the instant, the, the more levels of healing heal instantly. So, you know, built another pathway for that. 10 minutes, it was gone. So th these are just, I mean, these are things that if you would have told me I could do this a year ago, I would say, I don't know what drugs you're on, but if it feels good, I'll try some because, uh, you know, that that's that's incomprehensible. But, hey, it's all natural. It's uh, created, created by God. And uh, for some reason, we've been honored enough to uh, be given this. And our job is to find a responsible way to share it. I do know I'm not going to make a master list for everybody and just say, go for it. I'm going to I'm getting a little, little more guidance on that because you you can exhaust yourself if you do too much at once. So that, that's part of what I need to get some wisdom about how to process that. One of the questions is, um, can you create a pathway for, to eliminate high blood pressure? And that's a lot of our clients deal with that for sure. Yep, yep, you can. Yeah, that's what, I haven't checked my blood pressure since I healed my elbow and my blood pressure is way down already, but... I'm going to check that in the morning and see if it's, you know, like I'm on, I'm very little medication and it's mildly elevated, like, you know, one thirties over uh, 70 versus one ninety over 125 three months ago. But, and I'm, I'm barely taking some medication. So I, I, I want to see with this new stuff, if I can get, get that to clear. I think I can, I just, I'm being responsible. I'm not saying, well, I'll just go off everything and not check it. I'm not doing that, you know, so. Well, great, guys. Thanks for letting, joining us today. And we have a lot of great uh, questions. And I hope it's kind of eye-opening. And like I said, we're just in the start of kind of getting these things together and, um, you know, excited to help you out. And so, um, you know, we're, I'm trained in it and our practitioners are. And so if you would like to do a session, you can certainly give me a call at um, or get email me at Jody at quantumtechniques.com and we can get that set up. Um, there's several ways to you know keep in contact with us. You know, you, we send out these Zoom, um, send out a newsletter. Um, we also have Steve's been doing some new um videos on our YouTube channel at quantumtechniques.com. Um, I'm going to start loading in some of the stuff that I have on my own channel, which is Jody Pull Rope. Um, and that just lots of different, you know, videos on what we're doing and, and different ways to look at things. And so, you know, our, our thing is we want you to discover what is the root cause of that health issue. So you can finally get some clarity, have your energy back and live in peace. That's what it's all about. And if you've got a symptom, Jody can find you a pathway. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys have a blessed one. Take care. All right. Blessings guys. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.